How long does sciatic last? The sciatic nerve extends from the lower back, down the buttocks, the back of the leg, and into the foot. And sciatica is a set of symptoms or pain felt anywhere along the sciatic nerve's pathway. And this is normally due to compression. And it doesn't have to be just pain. It could be other sensations that can occur. Now, since the sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body and it affects a wide area within the body, symptoms can be very, very different for each and every patient that's dealing with this sciatic compression. So a sciatic uh, is not one or one type of problem or one type of issue. It can be many, it can be many different things that the person's experiencing. And for one patient to another, it may be very different. So all the symptoms are very case specific. It could be just pain in the lower back. It can be pain or numbness in the lower body, meaning the buttocks, the leg, the foot. It can be in one specific area. It can be down the whole area. It can be the whole leg. It can be decreased range of motion in the lumbar spine or in the lower body. It can be weakness in these muscles that affect the lower, the lower, the lower body as well, meaning weakness in the leg, the foot, or in the thigh. It can be also something called paresthesia, and paresthesia is like an abnormal feeling of, or a combination of pain and numbness, and it can be anywhere down that area, or it can be multiple areas going down that area. It can also be complete numbness of the, of the anywhere down the sciatic nerve or a lack of sensation feeling up. Now, we know the sciatic nerve is, can affect motor control and sensory control, so it can be a lack of motor strength, muscles and tissues, or it can be a lack of anything that you feel. Now, the most common causes of sciatica, and classically what most people are looking for is something that affects the disc, like a disc herniation. So most often when a patient is, is suspected they have sciatica, they'll send them out for a lumbar spine MRI and to examine the discs. And the MRIs are very good at looking at discs because they're gonna determine if there's a disc herniation or disc bulging or some kind of disc injury that could be compressing on a specific nerve root. Now, why are they looking for nerve roots? Because we know the nerve roots that exit the lumbar spine come together to form the sciatic nerve. And when you affect the nerve roots that form the sciatic nerve, you can lead to compression of those of parts of those areas and you can affect whatever area that that nerve root is controlling. Now they have this kind of mapped out. They know different areas like L1, L2, L3, L4, the different nerve roots are more likely to affect different areas of the sciatic nerve, but it's not always exact, meaning everybody's mapped out just a little bit different. Anything that affects lumbar spinal stenosis. Now lumbar spinal stenosis is when the holes that the nerve roots exit and the spinal cord itself that the holes become smaller for whatever reason, either alignment, uh, most, like, most likely because of alignment or because of degenerative bone issues, or also because of any type of um, other underlining spinal condition, things like scoliosis, uh, hyperlordosis, uh, those types of things can also lead to it. Anytime you cause uh, the holes to decrease, you're more likely to increase the compressive nature that could occur with things like sciatica. So it means it's compression occurs to the spine, it can compress those nerves and lead to like a sciatic um, episode to occur. Any type of degenerative disc disease, meaning degenerative disc disease or degenerative disc problems, people look at degenerative disc disease like it's a disease they caught like they or they acquired. Degenerative disc disease is normally a result of alignment. It's like an unaligned car. If a car is not aligned properly, one tire will wear out faster than the other three, just like one disc may wear out faster than the other than, than the other four or five. And this disc degeneration will decrease the space between the two of the vertebra and lead to stenosis occurring in that nerve root causing compression on that nerve area. Degenerative disc disease is also related with bone spurs. And bone spurs are um, were points that actually extend off the vertebral bones that can actually press on different nerves to cause uh, sciatic-like -like conditions. Things like spondylolisthesis can also cause uh, sciatic-like nerve pain. The spondylolisthesis is when the bones actually move forward relative to the bone above or below, and that's called a forward. There's also something called a retrolisthesis, and that's when the bone moves posterior or back relative to the bones above and below. And those things can also compress the nerves. And like I mentioned, spinal conditions like scoliosis or hyperkyphosis can lead to compression of these nerve tissues, which can actually lead to sciatic-like conditions. So anything that compresses the nerve tissue can lead to this problem occurring. Now, how long does sciatic last for? Now, this is really dependent on causation. In some cases, it can be very temporary, and it can only be a result of infl infl inflammation 
or some type of injury that occurred, meaning overuse injury, you overused your back or you lifted improperly, you had some type of injury. And these little intermittent flare-ups, like to say, or very temporary inflammation tend to resolve themselves in about in four to six weeks. And they tend to take care of themselves and patients may get massages or they may get chiropractic care and they tend to get better relatively quickly because it's normally a temporary inflammatory response that's causing um, slight compression to those areas. However, if it's caused by an underlying spinal condition that has more to do with alignment that's left untreated, unfortunately, sciatica can last many, many years, sometimes two, two, three, four, five years, and maybe even longer. And it's unfortunately estimated that 20 to 30% of patients that experience sciatic type of pain will experience symptoms for up to two years or longer. So it can be very devastating. And the symptoms, like I said, can be very mild and leave and just be annoying and can be completely devastating where patients can't even stand up and walk and amputate. So sciatica can have a wide variety of, of, of the way they present themselves to different patients. And the biggest thing is if you have sciatica, how do you treat it? Well, there's two specific ways of treating sciatica. One is what I call a symptom type of treatment where they try to treat the symptoms associated with sciatica. They try to hide the pain or numbness that you're feeling. And they do this with injections or maybe hot and cold therapy, maybe back strengthening exercises to make your back stronger, or just maybe general chiropractic care. But the best way to deal with sciatica is to actually address the cause of the sciatica. And if it's alignment related, you want to deal with the alignment that's actually causing the problem. And most often in sciatica, there is an alignment related issue. It's typically, if it's degenerated disc, it's because some kind of alignment issue. If it's because of some kind of scoliosis, it's stono stenosis, it's typically an alignment issue. If there's bone spurs occurring, it's typically the bone spurs are occurring because of some kind of alignment issue. So normally there's an alignment issue underlining the sciatic problem. So therefore, if you're just dealing with the symptoms, you're not necessarily addressing what's causing it. So therefore, having a, a com comprehensive examination to take your sciatic diagnosis into actually what's causing the sciatica is more important. So very often x-ray images are used, there are um, different evaluations are used. Now, what I like sometimes more about x-ray images than just MRIs, because MRIs are normally done laying down. And most patients with sciatica, when they lay down, they feel better. Why? Because they decompress the nerves. So you're seeing the spine in a decompressed nature. So therefore, when you decompress the spine, all you're really seeing is, you know, like a disc issue or disc herniation or bulging. However, x-rays are looking at alignment of the spine in a compressed environment, meaning x-rays are done standing or seated, which is, could be even better because it compresses the spine even more. Most sciatic patients notice that their pain increases when they sit because they compress the lumbar spine even more. So when you can see the spine in the compressed state, you can see exactly what could be causing this compression and seeing what's actually causing this compression can help it determine what's actually causing the sciatica to help you resolve it. So my closing thoughts here is, if you know you have an alignment issue, well, first thing you wanna deal with is deal with the alignment problem. If you know you have a scoliosis or spondylolisthesis or retrolisthesis, or you have degeneration of your spine, there's more than likely an alignment problem. You should address the alignment issue number one. Very often, patients will ignore the alignment issue, go get an MRI, they say they have a herniated disc and go have disc surgery and have the disc removed and fused. And a lot of times they're just not dealing with the overall alignment issue. So they may resolve that one compression, but since the alignment hasn't been resolved, the compression will occur above and below the surgery. And then it can lead to further sciatic symptoms. And now they're more complicated to deal with because the person's already had spinal fusion. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we have proactive treatments to deal with the alignment issue to try to stop from the sciatica becoming worse where you require surgery. And these proactive treatments are normally treatments that are combine multiple treatment approaches to deliver the very best results possible in realigning the spine to decompress the nerves that actually form the sciatic nerve to help resolve sciatic symptoms so the treatment results or the response will be more long lasting and more dealing towards the cause as opposed to symptoms. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.